We recently performed a thorough analysis of synchronization on modern hardware. The results of this analysis were published in the proceedings of SOSP 2013 under the title Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Synchronization But Were Afraid to Ask, co-authored by Tudor David, Rasid Gerawi and Vasilis Trigonakis at EPFL. In this video talk, I will present the high-level conclusions of this study. One of the biggest changes in the history of computing was a shift towards multicore processors. In a nutshell, until the early 2000s, processors used to contain one computation unit called the core. Nowadays, pretty much every processor, even the one in your mobile, consists of two or more cores, hence the name multicore. As you are probably aware, multicores brought big challenges in the design of both hardware and software. In particular, in software, one of the biggest challenges is the need for scalability. Scalability is the ability to increase performance as we increase the size of our system, for instance, as we increase the number of cores. One of the biggest impediments to scalability is synchronization. Synchronization is the coordination of concurrent accesses to some shared data and is deployed in order to ensure the consistency of this data. A typical example of synchronization is the use of lock algorithms to protect some shared data objects. Synchronization is essentially just an overhead in a system because it does not produce any useful work, but it is used only for the correctness of the system. Consequently, we can consider scalable synchronization as synchronization that remains inexpensive as we increase the size of our system. Needless to say, that scalable synchronization is key to the application scalability. However, regardless of the major importance of synchronization, there is still a limited understanding on how the low-level details of the hardware affect synchronization in software. This limited understanding motivated us to conduct an extensive study of synchronization on several state-of-the-art processors in order to understand what is the main source of scalability problems in synchronization. Our results indicate that the scalability of basic synchronization is mainly a property of the hardware. Let me now explain in a bit more details what do we mean by that. Nowadays, typical server machines consist of two to four sockets. This means that vendors glue two or more chips together to create one larger machine with a more processing power and more memory. We saw that both on Intel and AMD processors, the communication of two threads across sockets is two to eight times more expensive than within the socket. Synchronization is all about transferring context, transferring data from one thread to another. Therefore, synchronization has to build on top of these communication latencies. This leads to our observation that crossing sockets is a killer for the scalability of synchronization. In our experiments, we actually observe that when you cross sockets in a synchronization-bound application, you might even experience a decrease in throughput. Naturally, since synchronizing across sockets is super expensive, it's a good idea to explicitly put all heavy sharing within a single socket. Unfortunately, sharing within a socket is necessary but not sufficient to achieve scalability. We saw that on an AMD processor, even if you put everything within a, so a socket in software, the hardware might still induce cross-socket traffic behind the scenes, thus ruining the expected benefits of uh, locality. This problem manifests as a threefold increase in the communication latencies between threads. Now that we have covered the intricacies of processors with multiple sockets, let's see whether our lives become much simpler on single socket processors. To this end, we considered two modern many cores, one from Sun, which now belongs to Oracle, and one from Tylera. We first observed that, generally speaking, the two single sockets deliver better scalability than the multi-sockets when it comes to synchronization. So, is it that simple? The answer is no. We further observed that even the slightest non-uniformity plays an important role to scalability. In details, the single socket from Sun Microsystems is uniform, meaning that the communication latency between any two cores is constant. The single socket from Tylera is slightly non-uniform. Two adjacent cores can communicate 50% faster than the two most remote cores. Our results indicate that the uniform design scales up to 70% better than the non-uniform on the same workloads. To recap, we saw that on multi-sockets, crossing sockets is really problematic for scaling synchronization. The obvious solution of restraining sharing within a socket is not universal because the hardware might still induce expensive cross-socket uh, traffic. Finally, we noticed that even on single-socket many cores, the characteristics of the hardware determine at large the scalability of synchronization. The big picture out of these results is that the scalability of synchronization is mainly a property of the underlying hardware. Let me only clarify that we do not claim that badly designed synchronization might scale well due to the hardware, but we do claim that even well designed synchronization might not scale as expected due to the underlying hardware. In our recent SSP paper, you can find more observations, the detailed results that led to these conclusions, and of course, how one can leverage our results to avoid potential scalability pitfalls.